Hi, yeah, it's Jackie here from the LGFA. We're on a, a Zoom call again today and we're looking back on a previous TG Car All Ireland finals. This year is the 20th year of the partnership between TG Car and the LGFA, and it's also the 20th year of live finals on TG Car. Coming up very, very soon, December 5, we have our junior final, and December 20, our intermediate and senior finals. And to uh, reflect on their glory days, I have two former, as I say, All Ireland winning captains, Linda Wall from Water captain of Waterford in 2015 when they won the intermediate title and Angela Doohan from Sligo who was junior captain in 2006. Uh, ladies, how are you today? Hi, uh, good to have you on. Um, Angela, I'm going to kick off with your good self. Um, looking back through the record books, so 2004 you were there, 2005 you were there. And 2006, you finally got over the line. Um, we've had captains and people on before, Angela, who have gone through the heartbreak of losing one. In your case, it was unfortunately two. Um, and they always say that the satisfaction when you get over the line and win that title is absolutely immense. How was it for Sligo in 2006, Angela? Um, it was great. It was just kind of at the end of so much heartbreak. You know, 2004, we got there, and I think... We just kind of thought maybe it was a great achievement to get to Crow Park, to experience what it's like to play in Crow Park. I suppose it's every girl's dream to play in Crow Park. Like so many years, you'd be sitting in the stand all Ireland final day, looking out in that field, wondering, will I ever get a chance to play there? Um, unfortunately, it didn't go well for us against um, Kildare. Um, the following year, then we were grouped again, and we were so much more focused, I think. And I think against our map, the disappointment was twice as much for us because we kind of thought, right, we've got the whole, we've played in Cook Park, that out of our systems, uh, we mean business this time, but our man were just too strong for us and they were a great team. Yeah. Um, seen the following year they went on and got straight to the senior final. Absolutely, yeah. And we had the O'Donnell sisters on recently as well, Angela, and they were talking about that era as well. So yeah, you were spot on to, to come up against an Armagh team at that time. They were a formidable outfit. Yeah, they were, surely. And um, then, um, beginning of 2006, I suppose, it took a real, a real effort from us all to regroup again. I suppose we knew the talent was there, we had the commitment there. So we said, look, it's do or die this year. We give it absolutely everything. And thank God it all worked out for us in the end. And um, those lots of tears of joy after that game. And it's a day we'll never forget. Absolutely, well said. Well, well, you know the, the memories. I'm sure come flooding back. It always seems to be the case when I talk to former players who have enjoyed such great days. Linda, your reflections on 2015. It was a magnificent day for Waterford, and you know, ever since uh, Waterford more than holding their own as well. So, you know, that platform that you guys set in 2015 was hugely important. Oh, definitely. Um, I think we're kind of like listening to Angela talking there about about their their kind of um, journey to winning the All-Ireland is very similar to ourselves. Like we, we lost two before That's we right. won well and our ma were in our way as well. And Donegal, two excellent teams as well. So, I mean, I think I can really identify with what she's saying there. The relief on the day was just immense. I think that's all I did up on the on the on the steps of of uh, Crow Park was just cry like you know. So um, I don't even remember giving any speech or anything because it was just such a relief, like you know. So I mean that day, um, you know, we had been down in intermediate for seven years, and right. you think like, oh sure, you'll get back up, but you know, it's so hard to get out of it. The intermediate championship is so competitive and um there was just great teams down and once you get knocked out a senior you're 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 in a battle to get out of um intermediate as well so i mean i think it was a huge relief like to finally do it and to to, to get there and to win and um like you said the girls have been just holding their own ever since like i played for another year i think after that and we won division three and they've they've since won division two in the in the league as well so um they're absolutely just doing so well in, at, in the senior ranks, but it definitely is hard to get back to senior once you're once you're put down intermediate because it's a it's a dog fight to get out of there. And Linda, what was it like then to share that day with, with with family as well, which was I'm sure very very special too. That was that was a really big thing for me because I suppose I was coming to the end of my career, and. Uh, you know, I had Aileen and Marie there and our parents should go to everything as well. And, and like, you know, even all the Ballymac 
girls as well, the club girls. Like there was, I'd say everyone in Ballymac was up there that day, you know, in Crow Park. So, you know, as well as being with Waterford, it was the club as well and your family. So it, it was it was a huge thing, like really. And, you know, to do it with girls that you played for, uh, played with for years, like the likes of Aline Power and, you know, Keneally, Grani Keneally and, and I can't even think of others now like that, that I played for, I played with for years and, you know, it, it was great to do it like, with that. And it was so special to have Elena Maraid there as well, because, um, you know, I was, I was beginning to think I'd be finished before we'd win anything at that stage. But, uh, thankfully, thankfully we did it. And I was lucky enough to be picked as captain as well. And, um, you know, it was super, it was super. Angela, did you tempt fate beforehand? Did you have your speech tuck down your sock or <laughs> what, 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 what were you thinking? No, I didn't have anything written down really. I had actually a little bit of Irish written down. That was it, just to make sure I got that little bit right. But apart from that, everything just came, you could say from the heart that day. Yeah. Um, um, but no, I didn't have anything, anything prepared before that. And I thought if you start planning that, your yeah, you you're, you're, you're might jinx it only, I suppose. That's part of your thinking as well. Uh, when you said it just came, I'm sure it came flooding out. There was so much emotion just came flooding out, particularly what you've been through in the previous two years. And it, it probably wasn't very difficult to make a speech on behalf of that group. Um, it wasn't really. I suppose you were just caught up in the moment and the adrenaline was flowing. And um, it, was, it was some of it I can't remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> It all, it all just came out, but I suppose you just hope you remember to thank everybody and, you know, everyone that helped us throughout the year, and not even that year, but the years leading up to it as well. And there were so many other great players that would play just play the first night up, but never got the chance um, to play in Park or in All Ireland. So it's important to remember um, everybody that was involved in Sligo football on that day. Yeah, no, that's very well said, and it leads me back nicely to... Um... Linda, because you know, uh, Linda Angela talks about the players that went before and the legacy and the, tra and the tradition. And when you're from a club like Bally Macabre in a county like Waterford, it's absolutely dripping in tradition and All Ireland titles and so many great names. So when you still go up onto the steps there, you're you're representing, I guess, not just that generation that you're playing with, but the generations that have gone before, and you're writing new history, Linda. Oh, definitely. And I remember just um, totally idolising the Waterford team, you know, like players like Anne-Lisa Crotty, um, Siobhan, Siobhan Ryan, um, like the twins, Claire Ryan, you know, they were all just, I can't even think now, Marie Crotty, the only one, they were just total idols to me. And, you know, Michael Ryan used to, I, I was telling you the story before, Michael Ryan used to throw us in the back of the van like we did <laughs> amongst all the buckets and the and the trowels and the whole lot and go to training and like you'd only collect balls for them do you know what I mean you'd you know they were just amazing and if you got a few minutes of the training game you'd be delighted do you know so that was that was starting out with Waterford and it was the same with with Ban McCarbery you know what I mean because she when I started with Ballon McCarbery they were all all-stars playing on the team there could have been 10 all-stars on the club team yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's the way it was, like Marie Crotty, on your wall, the twins, like I, like I said, they had all stars just coming out their ears and they were just amazing. So um, I remember a story like Siobhan, Siobhan Ryan was the last winning captain and she got off the bus in Ballon McCarbery, just outside the pubs. And they were, they were just, you know, that's where kind of we used to congregate after the matches, I suppose, in the village. And uh, I was just trying to hang off her, you know, and, um, <laughs> and and get a touch of the cup. And she was like, you'll be up here one day. She said to me, you'll, you'll get there one day. And like, it was so, I remember that forever. And it was so amazing to actually do it. And I remember going back and telling her she said it. She didn't remember she said it at all. But um, she actually did say that to me the night they won the All-Ireland. Well, that's incredible. That it's yeah, incredible, yeah. The, Angie. The power of that message for a young girl, like it's, uh, it, like you know, when 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 you talk about role models, and were, were you conscious of that as well as part of that Sligo team, the impact that you could have on on young girls that they wanted to aspire to do what you were doing? Yeah, definitely. Because um, even the amount of of kids that was asked that the, the three finals, you know, there was buses coming from clubs and from um, schools we're arranging to, to bring them all to the matches and it, it's absolutely great because you know then you go to the schools and the kids they're talking after we won we went around to all the national schools 
and the kids were able to tell you, you know, about what happened at the game and, you know, they know all the, the players and that. And it's great. It's funny. Um, some of them, them, them players that were there, they're actually playing for Sligo now. Um, yeah. uh, so it, it's, it's, it's funny to see that they have come the full way. But um, it is, it's important, you know, to have role models. Um, I suppose when I was playing, I always looked up to Christina Heffernan, who played with Mayo. Yeah. Um, I was, always thought she was a wonderful player, and I got to play with her in Sligo IT, and it was great. And um, it's, it's important that you have these people to look up to. Absolutely, yeah. We, Christina it was inducted into our Hall of Fame um, last year, the LGFA Hall of Fame Mayo captain uh, in 2002 as well when they won the All-Ireland. So there's a, a lot of links. Um, Andrew, w- w- you came up against Sligo in the 06 final, or, or sorry, against Leitrim in the 06 final. What was that like in terms of, you know, another Connacht team in an All-Ireland final? How did you get your heads around that one? Um, yeah, it was probably strange because we actually played them in the Connacht final and yeah. we- lost to them and um, it was strange as well we knew each other so well um, because a lot of us actually would have gone to college together a lot of us in here in between Sligo IT and other colleges so we knew a lot of the girls and um, it did it, it made it strange but you know once that ball is thrown in you kind of forget all together about that it's, it's another game and you have to focus focus on it but um yeah, we would have played with a lot of those girls um, with college football and club football as well, you know. Yeah, it, it was, you know, the, 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 the provincial derbies, there's nothing like, quite like them sometimes. Um, Linda, how's life for you off the, off, off the, the, away from the playing fields? And you're, you're obviously in school there. I mean, the yeah. amount of teachers we've had on these interviews over the past few months is incredible. And I keep asking the question, you know, a very simple question. How are you and how is life and how are you getting on and family and everything? I'm great. I'm great. Um, I'm back to work. Thankfully, I'm glad the schools aren't closed for this lockdown because it was just terrible. Like the last one, you know, being at home and you're you're kind of um, wondering how the kids are doing and you're kind of in you're not in contact with anyone. And like once once you're in school, you're taking all the precautions for the for the you know not to spread the virus and everything. But you know, I'm enjoying being back to school and everything, and life is life is good at the moment. Anyway, we've let baby uh, Grace, so she's flying. And, How is she? Uh, what age is she now, Linda? Seventeen months now, so she's um, she's stuck in everything, pulling out every every drawer in the house, and get used to it, Linda. Uh, and, uh, running around everywhere and talking loads so she's she's really great brilliant because when i saw her um when i was down in bally mac to to film the bit for michael she was she was very young then wasn't she yeah i see yeah well, uh, i'm just trying to think yeah she wasn't walking or anything that stage yeah so she's She's just after exploding onto the scene now. She's there's no stopping her. <laughs> so Linda, during the first lockdown, when you when you weren't in school, um, just you know, speaking from a parent's point of view, that you can you can literally see them growing up in front of your eyes, the the, the little milestones and that. So in one sense, you got all of that at, at 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 that time. How are you finding now, maybe being away from her that little bit more? Like, sure, the hours are great. You know, I'm still I'm still only on a short day. I don't I don't okay. really mind it. She, there's more routine and everything. And like, it was great. I had an extended maternity leave. Everyone was telling me. But, um, you know, it is nice to be in school and have a routine and, and have your way of going on. And then we've really good childminder and everything. So, you know, I'm she's in good hands and her Nana minds her and her dad minds her. So it's great. You know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not missing out on too much. <laughs> Good. I'm glad to hear everything as well. And our best wishes, um, Linda. Angela, how is life for you? You're working in the, in the credit unions. You would have seen, obviously, our um, re- recent announcement that we have currentaccount.ie on board as our new All-Ireland Club Championship sponsors. Has that uh, hit home at local level, Angela, that, that recent announcement? Yeah, um, a lot of people have been mentioning it all right. And it's, it's great to see them coming on board um, uh, for the club championships and the volunteers. Um, I suppose both of us, both organisations kind of have the um, same ethos of, of the, the volunteers and that, and it's all community based. So I think the two of them work well together, really. It's a nice partnership. And how is life for you, Angela, in general? How, how have you found all of this? Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not too, too shy to admit that I've, I've, found, I've had some difficult enough moments over these past few months. It hasn't been simple by any shape or form. How have you managed? Um, 
Um, not too bad, I suppose. I've still been working throughout the whole lot because they were a financial organisation, so we were an essential service. Okay. So, were you were in the office, Angela, or from home, or what yeah. way did... No, we were working in the office. Okay. So, um, in a way, it was great. I still had routine compared to a lot of other people. Um, now, we had other people, some other staff, they were working from home, and it was, you know, a totally different experience for them. Um, but at least I had a routine of still going, in, going into work and you know people are um, anxious coming into the office and that and both the members and the staff as well so there has been some difficult times times all right during this whole pandemic but um, we're getting through it I think people are a little bit more relaxed than the what they were in the first lockdown really. Okay good. Um... Linda, so the obviously you're, you're you're back in school, which is is very very positive. Um, what's the new normal been like in, in in the classroom environment? How have you found that that transition? Um, I'm in support teaching, so I don't have my own class per se. So um, I suppose it's it's a lot of extra work for the class teachers, especially you know at the start of the of the year, it was extremely difficult to get our heads around all the new regulations. We had new times, new breaks, new everything, new procedures like cleaning, 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 sanitizing, sanitizing. But now. It's actually actually becoming kind of normalized. Like the children are just like sanitized, like there's sanitizers everywhere. You know, that would never have been in their vocabulary now, but they're like, they're not batting an eyelid at a mask or a sanitizer, or, okay. you know, we clean down, we clean down the, the classroom. I clean down every, after every group because I'm, I'm switching and swapping. But um, you feel for the children that, you know, they're not allowed to play together now. Like all the classes are segregated. So they have just play with their own class and they have, you know, that kind of thing. So you'd feel for them. And like, we really are really trying to do lots for them as in, we can't have coaches coming in. We can't have, we can't have X, Y, and Z, guitar, ukulele, you name it. We, we had it in here, but there's not that like kind of, um, I suppose, flexibility anymore now due to the virus. But, you know, we're trying our best like to really, do nice things for them. We had kindness week last week and it was absolutely brilliant and it was great for the staff and the children and we were all doing something for someone else and it was lovely. So that kind of thing. And we made a huge deal of Halloween and we normally do a witch's walk all around town, but we did it all around our school. Our school was just turned into a Halloween zone basically. So Brilliant. we're really trying to, uh, trying to give them a bit of excitement and, you know, because there's so much that they can't do. Mm. They can't make and you know but um we're we're doing well and i think you know we are trying our best for them and because you know they, they can't have play dates or anything like that yeah. now anymore like so we're really trying to make it as fun as possible in here without mixing and stuff too much and that you know that's brilliant it's absolutely fantastic yeah. i see jack comes home from school here with a smile on his face practically every day and you know he's, he's always full of the chats and the news it's it's so important for them linda and we're absolutely so proud of the work that you're doing and, and all of the teachers out there um Angela, what's uh, how is what's what's footfall like in the credit unions? Um, I remember back in the day, I might go in for a short-term loan for a little holiday or something abroad, but we can't do that at the moment. So people are still looking for money. I'd say, but probably not for foreign holidays. <laughs> no, not for foreign for this time. Um, during the last lockdown, really, we didn't have the amount of people coming into the office was pretty low. Um, a lot of people were using express lodgement instead of having to come into the actual office. Um, but and it probably suited as well, really. Um, there was less contact to our staff as uh, also. Um, just you know, people are anxious in that. Um, but it has been steadily increasing, and we have noticed this time that it's probably not as quiet. Um, now the lending for loans and that that would have decreased um quite substantially during the last lockdown. Um, but it did recover again. People were beginning to viral again. Um, but there was just so much uncertainty with people and their jobs. And, you know, a lot of people were on the COVID payment. Mm. Um, but I think this time when lockdown happened, everyone knew that the, they would be on the COVID payment. So at least they had that to fall back on. Um, I, suppose, I suppose the last time that wasn't in initially. So there was a kind of a lot of panic in that. But... Um, it, yeah, at least they had that to fall back on anyway, so it, it didn't impact as much. A lot of people were saving their money. The, the, the Christmas present <laughs> loans now will be the next ones. <laughs> the Christmas presents will be the next ones. Yeah, um, Angela. Yeah. Guys, before I finish up, can I just ask you, 
look, obviously the, the, the days that we've spoken about, uh, Linda for yourself in 2015 and for yourself in 2006, and it were massive days. When the day eventually comes, and I remember talking to you at the time, Linda, in terms of, uh, of retirement from inter-county football, how much did you, did you miss it or did you not miss it or did you miss it more than you thought you'd miss it? What was, how, how have you found life post inter-county? Um, well, I'd say I played for another year inter county after that, mm. and um, I suppose the inter county scene had just gotten so intense. I mean, there was so much going with it, and I really enjoyed the level that went with it. You know what I mean? Um, you know, there was every aspect of your life was kind of revolving around it. So I really enjoyed that level. It was kind of like elite and like nearly professional in Absolutely. a way, but. Um, so I did enjoy that, but then I was I was kind of coming, like I said, to the end of my career, and I didn't want to stay longer than I should, if you know what I mean, in 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 the senior ranks. Um, just I just kind of wanted to retire on my own terms, and I was I was definitely happy with how much I had played and what like we won the the league the year I retired. We won the Division Three. We won the All Ireland Intermediate. So I was I was kind of happy with my lot there. And then I suppose I had my club to go back to. Yeah. And that's a really that's a really good setup as well. And 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 we have you know great great trainers always and great great um, managers so for our club team. So I suppose I had that to go back to and kind of throw myself into. You know what I mean? And I would be kind of player. I, I'm sure every county player and is kind of like that now, but I, I just would hate to miss a session or hate to miss a match. You know, I'd change everything just to get there, you know? So I suppose it was a big, it was, it was kind of a relief, uh, you know, to go back to the club and, you know, I was living, I was living near my club training as well. So it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Um, I didn't have a big gap after retirement because the club scene was so strong with us yes. as well. You it was very good training to, to throw yourself into as well. So I suppose I gave up the club then and, you know, there was probably a gap, but then I had a baby. So that filled that fairly quick. <laughs> so, so um, you know, so I haven't really had time to miss it. You know, um, I suppose I went back for a bit this year. Um, you know, I caught the bug a little bit again, just helping out. But I think I was kind of more in the way than anything else. But... <laughs> You know, yeah. So I suppose I'm, I'm, I was kind of happy with my lot when I retired. I didn't feel I retired too soon or anything from sure. both. And just life moved on and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy with the way it went. Brilliant. Seamless transitions. And Angela, how was it for you? Um, I suppose after we won the All-Ireland, I played for another four years um, before I retired. I suppose you kind, of, you kind of know when it's time to go. <laughs> 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 and all the all the young ones are putting pressure on your position and things like that. But um, I suppose I missed uh, some of the girls that were training on that, you know. And um, I suppose it's only when you give up the county training you realise exactly how much time you put into it. Um, it's only really when you finish you realise that. Um, but I suppose I um, we have a good club with St. Matthews and. Um, uh, we're always trying to go for success. So I enjoy, I really enjoyed going back and giving my full commitment yeah. to, to our club. And looking forward to a Connacht final in the new year as well. We are, yeah, we're looking forward to that. So it's the first uh, Connacht final, senior Connacht final for our club. Fantastic. Yeah, so um, no, it was great to go back to, to the club because, you know, if you're only popping in out of the club training maybe every once a week, maybe you're that because you're county training. Um, you know, there's a lot of those probably younger girls coming through. You don't really know them that well. And it's only when, I suppose, when I'm back, you know, you get to know all the characters and, you know, you gel better with the team and that. And I just, I, I really enjoyed kind of going back to the club. And it's, as I said, it's a successful club and it's, it's going well still. Absolutely, yeah. They say it's our club. It starts with the club and it finishes with the club, folks. So it's a, it's a, it's a good mantra and it, and it definitely rings true. Uh, Linda and Angela, I really want to thank you for your time today. Thank you. 
uh, with a bit of to and fro before we got your boat on board. But really, really happy to have you on. Um, I love doing this this series because there's so many great stories and so many great memories. You can see it written uh, all over your faces, and I just hope that everything is good in your lives. And I wish you wish you so well. So my very special guest today, Linda Wall from Waterford, captain in 2015 of the TG Car All Ireland Intermediate Winning Team, and Angela Doohan from Sligo, the Junior Champions in 2006. Folks, stay safe and stay well, and thanks for coming on. No, but I'm not.